Hello, and thank you for joining me. I am Mark Chussel, the founder of Advanced Competitive Strategies. Welcome to this ACS strategy story, a brief presentation on a single strategy subject. You'll find links to other ACS strategy stories on ACS's website and on my LinkedIn strategy story post. The topic of this strategy story is the games strategists play. I don't mean company politics games or board games. I mean the game that we all call competitive strategy. Now, this is the only slide about me in this presentation. Now, you can pause your video if you want to, and if you want to enjoy all this glory. Uh, but for now, the key bits are just that I've been in competitive strategy for over 40 years and on six continents. I've helped companies and industries from airlines to vaccines. And I've helped them to improve their bottom lines by billions of dollars. So what game does your business play? Do you play crush the competition? tailgate the customer, follow our tradition, keep cutting costs, grow, baby, grow, get the deal or something else. The thing is, we all play games. The games we play reflect the way we frame the problems that we must solve. But there is one game that is atop all the others. It is simple, and you know this game. It might even be so obvious that you don't think of it as a game or as a choice. We'll come back to that in just one moment. This is the Baker Library at the Harvard Business School. HBS was founded just over a century ago with a mission of, of uh, spreading uh, scientific management. Now, the MBA is a master of business administration, not a master of business leadership or business disruption or business strategy. The deep down purpose of the Master of, Biz of Business Administration is managing. With that in mind, you might be able to guess the game that professionally, scientifically managed businesses play. It is this, make the numbers. That game is utterly simple, utterly clear, utterly common, utterly unconscious, and a way to frame every problem you face, though not necessarily well. So what does it mean to make the numbers? It means to hit the goals and Wall Street is happy, stay within budgets and the boss and the board are happy. And people sincerely believe in make the numbers. Professional managers, MBAs like me, learn more than just facts and techniques in school. We also learn culture. I don't mean Mozart and Leonardo, that's Da Vinci and not DiCaprio. I mean a worldview, a paradigm of how business works, a paradigm that includes functions, organization charts, best practices, efficiency, no surprises. I'm not saying those things are wrong or right. I'm just saying that they reflect the way that managers manage. Here's some numbers that General Motors made. In 1962, GM sold roughly twice as many vehicles in the United States as Ford. By 2016, 44 years later, GM, Ford, and Toyota were all selling about the same number of cars. That's a pretty steep decline for GM. Does that decline for them mean that they failed? From the perspective of managing, if share is sliding, we must be doing something wrong. So heads must roll, and if you can't get the job done, I'll get someone else who can. But now think about it from a different perspective. In 1962, the differences between GM, Ford, and Toyota were big. GM's differentiation and other sources of competitive advantage declined as those competitors learned and built. In 2016 and today, the difference between those companies are vastly outweighed by their similarities. GM should expect performance to converge roughly as it has here. Why would it be any other way as their differentiation has gone down? That perspective is not managing, that perspective is competing. I would say that GM competed reasonably well. Uh, compare them to Sears, for example, which did not respond effectively to Walmart or to Amazon. We see it in airlines too. The three largest airlines in the United States are American, Delta, and United. They are 
barely differentiated among each other, and they are about as close together on the Fortune 500 as three broad-shouldered passengers squeezed into coach. How can you tell if you're making a, a high quality strategy decision? That's a huge subject, and it's one to which I've devoted a great deal of work over decades in the simulations I've designed. The short answer to that question, how can you tell a high quality strategy decision, is first to figure out what game are you playing? Are you playing the gambler or are you playing the casino? The gambler and the casino play very different games. Both of them know the game is very, has many possible outcomes and both of them know the rules of the game, but the gambler bets on luck and the casino bets on science. Only a few percentage points separate the gambler and the casino, but that's how the casino makes a lot of money. Now, here's some hints that you might be playing the gambler. Uh, you may be focused on anecdotes. I know this company and they did something and it worked out really well, so we should try it. Uh, you may rely on, hey, it's working. Look at our strategy. We're making the numbers, so everything must be fine. Or if things aren't going so fine, well, we just have to work harder. Give us a pep talk and off we go. Uh, if we figure that bad trends will stop, well, companies tend to, to uh, figure that they can reverse bad trends and that they will go away. Good trends, on the other hand, those will continue. If you, if you hear those kinds of things, if you believe those kinds of things, you might be playing, you and your company might be playing the gambler. What about how to, put, how to play the casino. In the casino, we think this is, well, this is also a huge subject, but I will just share this with you and suggest that you give it some serious thought. This is not a joke. It works in practice, but does it work in theory? When you think about a strategy you like, ask yourself that question. Again, I'm not joking. The point here is to separate the luck of the gambler from the science of the casino. You may also think about it in terms of it works in stories, but does it work in theory? We humans interpret the past as stories. They did this and they got that. Then we say, I would like to get that. So if I do this too, just like the other company, then I will get that too. We humans strategize in stories. But my question for you, my suggestion for you is to, is to ask these additional questions. Can you come up with a plausible story, one that withstands, for example, colleagues who role play competitors? Can you come up with a story that, that will work? In other words, when you have your, um, your colleagues role playing the competitors, that's a business war game. Can you come up with algorithms that describe how markets work, like GM, Ford, and Toyota, and that fit your story? In other words, a strategy simulation. War games and simulations like that can be done. I know because I've done them. I've seen people in war games and using simulations challenge their own stories. The stories often fail, and that gives people permission and motivation to find better strategy stories about their futures. It works. With that, I'll say that's the end, or maybe not. Please feel free to contact me with solutions to many strategy problems. My contact details are on the screen there. And I would love to talk with you about what you've heard here. Love to talk with you about the kinds of questions that you may have. Thank you again for joining me. Be safe and be well.